right, everyone. So welcome for today's KCP community meeting on January 31st. Um, let's see what new topics we have. Um, I see one, Stefan, next release 011. When should we target that one? I guess that's a question. Yeah, nothing to add. So just a question what people think. Then you go ahead. Uh, so there's a lot of flakes right now. And I realized that the test flakes don't necessarily need to gate when we cut a release, but it would be nice to get a lot of those resolved before we do if we can. Uh, I'm actively working on investigating each one as I come across it. I would ask, are there large features that are still outstanding? that we want to get in, like anything that's a breaking change to storage or uh, APIs, anything along those lines. Can I ask for updating the kube release 1.26? Oh yeah, we probably should do a rebase before we cut 0 0.11. I'm, I'm not sure we should combine those. So if we move to hot fixing mode basically now and we target, I don't know, a week from now, 10 days from now, something in this direction. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not against um, tagging um, something that depends on KU 1.24. Um, I'm just, uh, yeah, so as long as we move to 1.26 soon. I, we will, we will. I mean, um, rebase will also take some days, so maybe it's a parallel work. But it will also maybe destabilize things. I also recall some hiccups with some incompatibilities with things like ingress objects, David, when we have been doing some testing around the sync apart. So I, I'm, I, there is already some things that we need to take care about when we bump to 125. Um, there was something about CRDs or I don't know. There was, there yes, was something, I mean, some hiccup we, we went along when we were investigating yeah, something possibly. on 125. Yeah, sorry. Uh, yes, possibly some incompatibilities. The the thing is that you know if we increase the root compute uh, the version of the cube version of the root compute API export, then that limits um, the the cube uh, that increases the cube release that physical clusters need to have in order to be able to to uh, sync. Uh, things so we have to you know the more we move the cube version of the root compute api export the more we should think about providing root computes alternative root compute api exports for uh, as um, older versions of cube in order to you know increase the 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 um, range of of cube versions uh, we can sync uh, to why why does this limit uh cluster versions i don't understand yeah because it it it's mainly related to the testing of schema compatibility you know we expect that the schemas are wider on the physical cluster than what they are on the kcp side because we don't want to lose some fields when you um, sync a resource from kcp to the physical cluster yeah, maybe it's not not for now, but I, I would like to hear more details in this direction. Yeah, I mean, this is, I mean, we cannot um, limit that. I know one twenty three is added to a cluster. Yes, exactly. I mean, it, it's it's mainly probably something we have to to revisit. Either revisit how we manage compatibility, or revisit how we provide various versions of yeah. the of the cube compute. Let's talk about that offline. Sure. It's yeah. not really the topic here. Um, I have one question on this topic, uh, since you are talking about this. Uh, this is something that I noticed, I think was introduced probably in 0 0.10, that you added this uh, compute workspace with these predefined schemas for deployment, ingress, and service. What was the motivation for that? Um, Paolo, can we move that to another section, maybe? We can sure. put a, yeah, yeah. Uh, an item at the end because this is not really the release tagging. Sorry, okay. Okay, can you add that question, please? And we can come back. Just in the issue. 
Okay. And uh, one question from my side regarding the release. Like, I literally started to understand the problem we're having with service account and, and sharding and replication a little bit better <laughs> after I investigated my escalation prevention fix. Stefan, is this something like what we started to briefly talk about today in Slack? Is this something we want to solve like short term or is service account, the service account replication problem so, something? I mean, we I don't think we have to have full support for sharding for everything in this tech. Um, we know that TMC is not ready, and this might be something else. Um, I was about to mention that. <laughs> if this is a bug in CI, which brings instability, we should at least find a workaround, whatever this is. And this can be as simple as um, fixing the workspaces or something in this direction. I mean, workspace is too short. Scheduled to, to Wood or something like that. Right. I also have another work around my mind. I just, I also don't want to like lay out the whole problem because I fully need to understand it myself as well. Yeah. Uh, but I, I agree we need some sort of solution. I think I will go ahead with the one um, uh, creating a technical user because I would like to have the privilege escalation fix to be at least included in 0 11. Okay. Any more concerns for cutting release 011? As far as I understood, the TLDR is we will cut it with the sharding work being done and currently exclude the pure Kubernetes bump for the sake of not introducing additional um, instability yes. and we'll make it a separate release. So, okay. And, and in addition, maybe let's not merge bigger PRs, which Mike, um, might make things more unstable. We can reevaluate maybe in a week in the community call where we are, Andy. But if we can tag in 10 ish days, would be good, I think. Right. Sounds good. Okay. Any more comments for 011? Uh, when it comes to the when, do we have consensus? Not yet. <laughs> Thumbs up, Andy, that means when? Maybe I didn't get it. Uh, I mean, the milestone right now has February 10th. Uh, seems reasonable. <laughs> All right, sounds good. Yep, sounds good to me. All right, in that case, um, next topic. Mike, upstreaming super namespaces Redux. I also saw a comment from Andy. I will end off right. this to both of you. <laughs> <laughs> sure, right. and. Uh, yeah, I mean, the thing is, it's known by different na names in different communities, um, right? In this community, it's called Logical Clusters. Uh, in the APA, I mean, you say more broadly, they call it super namespaces. The point is here is I don't want to argue over the names. Um, I'm just want to, you know, as I mentioned last week, you know, I think there are multiple use cases for this. And I asked whether if we upstreamed only this, if that would remove the need to carry a fork of Kubernetes. And the answer was no. So uh, there's a follow-up question I wanted to ask, which is, I suspect that if we upstreamed super uh, logical clusters, uh, that would reduce the size of the, the divergence, right? It would make it easy, uh, the, the, the fork that we carry in KCP would be a much smaller change from upstream Kubernetes. Um, and we do have uh, other use cases for this um, besides uh, KCP's use case, um, TMC's use case. We have Edge MC's use case, uh, cross-plane uh, is a use case. Um, Haifa, our colleagues in Haifa have some use cases in mind. Um, so I, I think it is, you know, kind of a, a generally interesting thing to do. And so I wanted to gauge the interest here in, you know, trying to get that work upstream for the benefit of all the use cases, you know, including reducing the size of the divergence in the fork that's carried here. And you go ahead. Um, we would happily support upstreaming it. Uh, I don't think it's realistic that upstream will accept it, but that doesn't mean we shouldn't write a cap and see what happens. OK, thank you. Um, 
so why do you think upstream would not accept it um mainly because they've told us to do it. <laughs> right uh, so sig machinery is committed to making the code that they own the best single cluster experience out there and that is what it comes down to yeah. right i know that they have said no to to things from kcp um but the the thought i have is that for this logical cluster concept there are additional use cases so there's a stronger case for it uh beyond just kcp yeah. and, and they do say you know that they think api machine is is good for more than its use in kubernetes so you know this is consistent with their their broader remarks you know even though the kcp only sale has not succeeded i hope that with more use cases you know we can succeed yeah i i mean i i'm clearly in favor i'm also very pessimistic if that's fair understood thank you other people So I just want to support that there are many use cases that are even single cluster, but still need the, this level, for example, of additional isolation. So uh, um, Ezra, could you maybe name them for these people? So that uh, it's kind of a, a, a some some services we are trying. To, for example, we have a what I think it's already open. The Fabric service, uh, Fabric is kind of listed in ik i think in the in the end i think the the problem was that it's a service that the the customer what they bother with is the fact that crd is cluster level and then uh, they, they, they are fine with having a single cluster but they don't want uh, um they don't want a kind of everyone to uh, the, everyone has the access to all the CRDs, right? Everyone that has access to CRD can actually, uh, and they like this idea of different versions and so on. So the isolation of, uh, let me put it like that. If we look on what is exactly what is implemented, we simply add another bit, right? In the database, we now have another kind of column and uh, so the fact that you can take some stuff that are not namespaced and allow to isolate that also to some groups is is, is, is very strong on, on many well, Yes, I think everybody here understands the virtue of it. I yeah. was wondering if you could maybe drop in the uh, community meeting uh, Slack issue an actual reference to these additions. Yeah, I, 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 will send, I will send a link to the project itself, but the input is from the customers. Uh, the customers that actually want to use that, they do not want, um, we run, okay, let me put it like that. We run pods and workload on their production cluster. They are fine with that because they, they are okay with the isolation that Kubernetes supplies to you, but they do not like us uh, putting some CRDs that kind of pollute the whole cluster. Okay, so they don't like it. Uh, so that's the, the reason I will send a link to the actual project, and we have several kind of okay. projects Great. like that. So yes, if you could send, maybe this is a more of a mailing list kind of thing, uh, just a brief summary of the projects that could uh, benefit from upstreaming logical clusters and yeah. the customer problem that that uh, helps with. Right, uh, uh, one, one comment before I can see that Stefan want to say. One thing that we wanted to, make sure is that if suppose that we can upstream that uh, we will really like the kcp to actually use whatever was upstream right uh, even if it you require to change some of your code for that if we will end up upstreaming these logical namespaces and in kcp you will say, oh, it's too much work to refactor our code to use it and will not use it. You use your own kind of stuff, then we kind of miss the point here, right? Yeah, I think that's clear. 
Um, all right, Jesse, also, maybe if you could pile on to uh, whatever Ezra eventually does, I'd like to have a list, you know, so we could take it to the API machinery sig and say, look, here are these use cases. It's not just KCP. It sure. is a broad community issue. Sure. Yeah, I'll let Stefan go, but I'll just say that I have the same same situation where I do, I have many customers who I want to distribute CRDs and operators to, and I would prefer not to pollute their view of their clusters. Those, they, they are not concerned with the, the operational workloads that I put on their cluster. Thank you. Stefan. Yeah, I'm curious about um, what are the next steps here and who will do what? I heard collection of use cases in some doc, some doc maybe. Yes, I think I think it should be sufficient if we just collect a brief summary of each use case and get on uh, an API machinery SIG call and say, look, we've got all these use cases. What do you guys think about, you know, is this as a something worthwhile to take up in this scope? And I understand you will make this move, like present it in the SIG? Yes. Yes. Okay. Thanks. And Mike, do do you want to do that before we actually have a cap for that? Uh, just yes. to get the general feeling? Yes. Okay. Okay. All right. Thanks a lot. Any more thoughts on um, the upstreaming initiatives? Very much looking forward uh, around the use cases talk as well. Um, in that case, I would like to move to the next topic. Um, Stephen, head charts. Yeah, so um, this is something we've discussed in a few threads on Slack recently. Um, uh, several folks have been uh, asking for an update to the Helm charts and also asking questions about the manifests that are in the main KCP repo. Uh, turns out that both of those are outdated. Um, and obviously things have been moving quite quickly in terms of um, flags getting added and removed and things. So um, I went ahead and pushed an update to the Helm chart based on a fork that we've been maintain maintaining. Um, it would be um, nice to just decide, you know, whether we're comfortable with the commitment of trying to keep the Helm charts up to date, um, you know, whether we're just going to do it for main or maybe main and the current stable release. Um, and if anyone else is interested in collaborating on that. Um, I also wondered whether it makes sense to just remove the manifest from the main tree, because um, even if you don't want to use Helm, effectively the templates in there give you manifests you can render and then um, hack on. So it seems like it might be a, a useful first step just to kind of have a single place where we maintain uh, the manifest. So um, yeah, just wanted to kick off that discussion and see if anyone wants to collaborate and what the next step should look like. Um, count me in, Stephen. I would like to collaborate um, generally for the hem charts. I will leave up the question whether we want to maintain the hem charts for the wider audience. But uh, yeah, uh, count me in. So I would like to see also KCP being easily deployed on things like OpenShift. Um, we have been discussing this briefly as well. So happy to help here. Um, next one in the queues were, I believe, first Mike, then Andy. Um, okay, yeah. Um, so um, this is hopefully a relatively minor thing. Uh, you know, we agreed earlier that the documentation would be versioned, so um, that you know we could work on um, something without. Ha well, I come to realize, you know, we actually have a current problem that's really horrible, which is the only documentation you get is served from main but we want to document how to use the last tagged release, um, which means that the, the latest documentation is not actually for the latest code, uh, which is a really horrible situation to be in. Um, so, uh, and, and there's a PR to fix this uh, and fix it well using regular uh, GitHub techniques. Um, I, I was just gonna hope we could get some enough review to actually merge that and get into a good place. 
Yeah, so Mike, I think we've maybe skipped ahead. We were still discussing the Helm chart issue, but um, the docs oh, updates... Oh, sorry, I misinterpreted the prompt. Yes, no, no worries. The, 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 okay. the, the, the docs update definitely sounds like a good thing, um, and I think it kind of ties into the kind of intro, into the you know the, the more user-facing kind of experience. We want people to be able to deploy onto clusters. I think in terms of scale testing and stuff like that, this is going to be important from kind of a dev perspective as well. So um, Andy, sorry, you had your, your hand raised. Uh, thanks. I agree we should have a way to make it easy for folks to install KCP, and Helm seems to be fairly desirable. So I'm in favor of continuing to maintain them and keep them up to date. I would like to see some sort of CI, CD, whatever you want to call it, so that if we make a code change in main, we know fairly quickly that we've broken the main version of the Helm chart. Whether we have to like fix them in lockstep, you know, probably not, but we definitely need the signal. And um, I think trying to minimize the number of ways that we do things, the better. So I know that we have a manifests directory in the KCB repo that's got some manifests in there. Should probably just get rid of those. Um, so I guess my question would be, so it sounds like Sergius, you're interested in helping. Steven, you obviously have <laughs> done some work with your pull request. Uh, maybe you two could start with what you've got, get it merged and do some brainstorming on the CI aspect. Yeah, yep. that sounds, sounds reasonable perfect. to me. Cool, thank you. Okay, that's all. Thanks, everyone. All right. Before we go on, um, Mike, to your versioning topic uh, uh, again. Um, any more thoughts on the Helm chart? Anyone else wants to chime in? All right, um, Mike. In that case, uh, you're talking about versioning the documentation. I think um, that's continue that discussion if, if you feel it has not been um, answered enough. Yeah, um, I, I I don't know. I mean, there's this PR that's been just waiting for some attention for a while and hasn't gotten any. Um, I was hoping I could get some commitment to actually get it done. Stefan? Stefan. Yeah, I think there's no objection to the PR, just nobody you can really judge whether it's good there is not so much risk, so we can merge it. So, Mike, if you if you look through it and give an LDGM, and your I will just approve, and we see how it goes. If something goes wrong, I don't think we can test it, right? If something goes wrong, somebody has to fix it quickly, I guess. Andy? Yeah, it looked like it was pushing to the GH Pages branch in the KCP repo, which is currently empty. Uh, so I, I'd asked a question like, oh, I see that you're doing this. And I think Amanal said, yeah, we, we haven't been using it, but we're going to start using it. Um, I, I agree with you. Like, if, if Mike takes a look at it, it looks good, then we can approve it. Uh, longer term, I would like to drastically simplify the docs process. Uh, and, you know, that, that's not necessarily a topic for right now, but I have found the scripting in there is uh, pretty dense, and I'd like to try and find a way to make that easier. Uh, my only problem is I don't actually understand the technology involved in, the, in those docs, <laughs> so I, I'm not really qualified to give LGTM. All right. I'll, I will look at it after the meeting um, again in more detail and... Uh, I mean, it does give right permission to the action to push to the repo, but as long as we're comfortable with what Git activity is in the pull request, I don't think it'll be harmful. All right, thank you. All right, okay. Um, any more topics that you want to bring in short term? Well, going back to the question asked earlier, I added this to the list of topics. Um, yeah, I was curious to know why this um, root compute was added and why those predefined schemas were added. Also, because I understood that at some point there was a desire to sort of decouple the core KCP from uh, TMC. And so now I don't understand why when you 
just create you know kcp you end up with those things that i guess i heard that there is some problem now with maintaining possibly version of kubernetes etc so it looks like we're going back to tying things to maybe to optim for optimization purpose to some optimizing for uh, and then basically tying to to this you know release of kubernetes and other stuff like that so I, I was wondering what was the rationale for for that and you go ahead yeah so uh we are going to split it back up it really was just a timing issue uh, at the time, we wanted to try and provide a good experience for folks who were just going with KCP out of the box to try and minimize the amount of extra work that was necessary to get uh, the deployments APIs and services and ingress APIs available by default. But it, after we finish our journey of refactoring things, that won't be in KCP core. It'll be part of a TMC add-on, and it'll probably be optional if you want to pull it in or not. So uh, we're on a journey to to get to a combination of easy out of the box plus customizable customizable uh, settings. So uh, you know everything here is basically iterative. So the you know it's where we are right now. Okay, see how that answer at least. <laughs> Maybe David. Yes, I mean, I think we have to to uh, decouple the question of the versioning versioning that we discussed previously, which is mainly um, a general question of how do we manage um, the you know uh, compatibility of the schemas between the APIs inside KCP and the APIs on the physical clusters. It's a wider question. Um, as soon as we have some API export available for um, unlimited number of user workspaces, then we have to know how we tackle the compatibility of schemas. So, you know, it's it's not specific to, to the cube uh, API export, to the root compute API export. So we have to decouple that. Decouple that. And then uh, as to the, the um, providing, you know, a default uh, compute Kubernetes API export, it's as Andy said. It's probably something that should be that will be part of the TMC, you know, extracted uh, uh, project. But uh, it's not something that you need to bind. It's something that you will probably bind by default if you want to sync uh, some workloads. Something that is available by default and that avoids you. Uh, having to systematically import your schemas from your physical cluster, but it's only you know uh, something available by default, not not mandatory at all. Does it make sense? Um, yeah, it does. Um, was uh, I was having some difficulties uh, with that, but okay, we we don't need to discuss that now. Maybe offline. Um, Daniel, you have also some comment. Yeah, so it sounds like we're mostly focused on like the workload APIs here, and um, uh, I'm curious if uh, and there, this may already be something that's possible. But do we currently have a mechanism to say like basically create this new workspace uh, with no APIs enabled? Like if you look for the API resource, it's basically nothing, um, and then subsequently say, hey, create all workspaces with these like custom APIs that are not built into KCP today. Is that current functionality that's offered? Um, it was like that. I think we just went a bit too far in adding the, the bindings there. Um, yeah. I guess a pull request to move back a little would be welcome. So what we have is, maybe this is also helpful here. We have this batteries feature. So you can say minus minus batteries and then include them, exclude them. So. Mm -hmm. Either we, we move it back, like there is no compute uh, or no workloads by default, or we just add this annotation or whatever it is to, to bind it to a battery. So it must be optional enabled. Either is probably fine. Gotcha. And does that just apply to the workspace APIs? Um, or the workload, that... yeah. Workload, workload. yeah. Workload, yeah. yeah. yeah but... That one, and maybe scheduling as well. That's a uh, placement, I think. Because even now, the root compute is not included by default. 
it is included when you uh, you know if you bind to compute if you you know create a placement to start syncing then by default you will also bind to the uh, common uh, workload uh, you know the root compute but if you don't try to 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 sync and if you don't create a placement uh, you just don't have the 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 the, the default cube API export bound. But the APIs are there, I think, for 10 years, this is even not nice, right? Mm -hmm. They are available centrally, yes, which we can disable by batteries. All right, I think we have one more raised hand, Ezra. Yeah, I just want to ask a general question, probably to Andy. Is there an existing document that even on a very high level uh, try to come up with what's going to be included in the KCP core and what is not, or not yet started? Uh, because uh, we keep hearing, you know, okay, that will be in TMC, we'll end up without having that, but uh, are there concrete plans already? Andy, go ahead. Okay. Sorry. Yeah, we have plans. We haven't written them down yet. Uh, Priority-wise, it's lower than some of the other stuff we're working on. So the best thing we have is Paul's document, I guess. Where is this? Is an enhancement, or where did you put it? Like a uh, plan yes. for year or something? Yeah. Uh, we'll find working on it uh, this one oh i have it it's in it's in Q, uh KCP itself. it's not in the enhancement ah okay no wonder i can't it's find this it. one right Can I, check? I think so <laughs> yeah and yeah i should we should move that over to the other repo we should yes the lower part is something it's may yeah the current thinking is core is everything without hierarchy without tmc kcp itself will be with hierarchy so with workspaces and kcp tmc then has tmc as well that's the current thing I'm thinking which I'm more or less so matches what's written here okay thanks I'll, uh, I'll have a look thank you Okay, um, I guess if there are no more comments for the root computer workspace questions, we can go ahead for the incoming issues. So let's see, but uh, kubectl kcp ws3 uses cluster names instead of workspace names, Daniel. I think you submitted the bug. A little bit context yeah pretty yeah. much obvious what is there <laughs> yeah yeah is that i just want to uh verify that that is not uh the desired behavior i would assume doesn't it's... look like cool <laughs> yeah. i can i can submit a pr on this one awesome so uh, boop, 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 help me out um andy a little bit for milestones, what should I say here? Backlog, next. Um, I mean, I would put it in, uh, it, I mean, Daniel, you're gonna work on it soon? Yeah, I could probably get one in today. Um, All right, uh, just, yeah. so Sergius, put it in next, and right. uh, the milestone could be 0 011. Right, that would be great to have it in there, actually. Great. Thanks a lot. Daniel, that would be a great contribution. Um, next one, feature syncer able to create self-sufficient targets. Mike, since you're on the call, maybe a little bit context. Sure. Um, for Edge, we want to support disconnected or intermittent connectivity. Um, so the Edge cluster needs to be self-sufficient. Uh, 
and, and not only for disconnection, but for maybe data sovereignty or other regulatory sorts of requirements, we will be able to create self-sufficient edge clusters. So that means when the sinker, you know, creates stuff that has containers, those containers get connected to the local API server rather than the one back in the KCP workspace. Um, and, uh, you know, we, I think that's maybe the primary consequence. Um, we can adjust the heart beating to, you know, basically a huge time so that the, we don't have a problem with bogus uh, health problems detected. Um, but, you know, so the, the goal is to support this uh, self-sufficient construction. And, uh, you know, talking with David Fest earlier, he suggested that, you know, that's a pretty small change or generalization to the thinker. You know, we could either, you know, do some kind of a common core code or just generalize the existing thing. I think his suggestion was the simplest thing to do would be to generalize the existing thing. Um, so that's that's this. Yeah, maybe to just to add uh, one point here, um, the specific case of you know not pointing back to KCP but still pointing to the the, the physical cluster uh, in containers. Yes, I mean technically at least that mainly boils down to disabling uh, some code that was explicitly added to you know change uh, this uh, the, the the API server uh, uh, endpoint. So you know disabling code or having an option to disable that it's not it's technically completely feasible now the question is do um and that's more a question for the community i assume do we want to feature wise uh enable this uh, enable users to have this choice in a single sinker command line or do we want to uh, still have two sinkers with those two different behaviors Yeah, I, I, I actually wanted to add to that, that in the future, I would actually love to see a more granularity on that, that will even allow me when I do a deployment, which includes controllers and so on, specifying the YAML, whether that controller maybe should talk back to the, because there are some, we can see use case in which we use KCP is the way to, you know, deploy the stuff to multiple uh, kind of clusters, but the controllers actually interact completely with the local uh, cluster, right? Maybe listening to nodes, doing stuff on the local cluster itself, not going back at all to resources on the KCP. Um, so that will be very nice to have a feature like that. That's my two cents. Andy, Stefan, in that order, go ahead. Uh, Mike, um, can you help me understand the feature request here? What it, what would the disconnected sinker do differently that you're trying to do here? Um, right. So the the request is is you know broadly we want to accomplish this functionality somehow. Um, there's some options about how we can do it, and then they're laid out here, right? Um, I'm suggesting a generalization of the existing sinker. Um, so the idea is that uh, when it's given this choice, when it's told to behave this way, right, the current sinker, right, when it creates uh, in the P cluster a deployment, for example, it modifies the, you know, the deployment object so that uh, the containers in it, uh, when they go to use the kube api right they get directed to the kube api back in the origin workspace not in the api server in the local p cluster All right so it would be about not making that change so that the containers in the p cluster talk to the api server in the p cluster okay so you want the deployment mutator to have some configurability right basically the ability to turn off the mutation yeah just not yeah. mutate that's that's my need Sure. So I, I would probably advise against some sort of simple Boolean here. Um, I think that that opens the door for like, oh, well, we'll add another Boolean and it'll control something else. And then you have this weird matrix of things that may or may not work. So um, I think that if we can 
refactor the sinker as needed to have a core that both the non-edge and edge sinkers can use, but they're, you know, wherever things are different, the, the differences are in the individual repos as opposed to uh, as part of the core, that would be my recommendation. Yeah, I was basically to say the same thing, maybe more concretely. In the moment we add a flag, we make this sinker binary usable in two completely different use cases. And that happens what Ellie just said. Um, I think what would be a much better um, first step, make another binary and try to make the sinker core adaptable. This can be as simple as adding a Boolean to the options of the sinker. I guess there is such a thing. Yeah, yeah, clearly. Um, so, but not, don't expose it as a flag. And then the binary which you build for Edge, which uses 90% of the code, can set this Boolean to false. So it's I basically it internal. Like 99.9 percent, .9%, right? It would be a. That's a, fine. We a, start as we start at 99.9, .9, and this will change over time, right? The more you implement, the more we will see that we have to split apart certain parts of the sinker and make it more adaptable to this use case. Yeah. So we are starting more like from the inside of the sinker binary and adding another external surface. And yeah, so that's on the way. So the rule of thumb here would be that that we we always have separate binaries. Yeah. I agree. All right. So I'll work with David to. Um, I, I think we, if if this is the the approach we want to take, let's just start there from the beginning. So I'll work with David on uh, coming up with a separate binaries in ninety nine point nine percent common code. Is it okay to assign to you, Mike? Sure. Okay. Uh, yeah, this one's a bug. And I, I was talking to a muted. Sorry, <laughs> Andy, go ahead. Yeah, this one's a bug. Um, it's occasionally pops up in uh, CI. And I have a thing that tries to fix CI to not randomly hit this bug, but that doesn't fix the bug. That just fixes the uh, CI test. Th this is a purposeful test, Chef, uh, Stefan, in uh, the EDE that says, we're going to delete the root shard and then create a workspace. We want to see that the workspace is unschedulable then we create the shard again, and we want to see that the workspace transitions to scheduled. And we can do that without deleting a shard, but that just fixes the test. That doesn't fix the bug. A, um, there was a discussion in Slack also about disruptive tests. Maybe we should start thinking about those, like to have another suite of tests, which yeah, are that, that's fine essentially too. and. Um, but, but this is an actual bug that <laughs> needs a solution. So. Uh, yeah. I don't think it's super high priority, um, but it, it will be need. It will need to be fixed when we expect shards to be coming and going. So I was planning. Um, oops, sorry. Yes, I was planning to work on disruptive tests. So if that's okay, I can take that one as well. I was going to be my question. Thanks a lot, Wukash. And the next one, Buck. Confusing error message about workspace name. Uh, Mike. Yeah, um, this is really simple. Um, you know, I tried experimenting with uh, creating workspaces with different names and discovered uh, in my first experiment that I get a compound error message that says three things. It makes a claim in English about what's allowed for a workspace name. Then it gives two different regexes. 
and all three claims describe different uh, sets of possible allowed workspace names. Um, and then I tried another experiment and got only one of the three things out. So something really strange is happening. And obviously, we should get one description only, and it should be accurate. Stefan, go ahead. I guess this is just how Cube works. There's a, in custom resources, there is a name validation function. And we add, I guess, open API. And that's what you see in the first one, probably, invalid value. So there's a regex we define in open API in the CAD. Or maybe not the other way around, maybe. I don't know. But it's probably just the output from the validation of CADs, and this is just that switch. Um, what we can do is CL can have nicer messages. So if you encode that in CL, if this is possible, it would be a way. Andy has an idea. I was going to suggest that we see if anybody's interested in working on this. If anybody wants to take the assignment. If not, we can just shove it in the backlog. I can take it. I've been uh, goofing around a lot with um, CL, and I've been fighting a lot with it, so I'll take that one. Thank you. All right, uh, feature, Daniel. Do not require API conversion to exist for API resource schema if no conversion required. You yes, we had bit, a, maybe? A good, yeah, we had a good chat in Slack about this. Um, I guess just for context for folks who haven't seen the issue already, um, if you try to bind uh, to an API export in a workspace and uh, you're trying to look up the, uh, uh, it's trying to you know get the API resource schema, if it has multiple versions supported and there's no API conversion with the same name, um, then it's going to uh, fail to do so. Um, and so, for instance, I ran into this when we had uh, a, a resource with two identical versions. Um, so there's obviously no conversion that needs to take place there. Um, you can uh, create an API conversion that just has an empty spec, um, and it works just fine. Um, but it would be kind of nice to not have to create this. So uh, essentially, uh, if you scroll down a little bit, there's a, a little bit of the direction um, for moving forward here. Um, it seems like uh, we have a pretty good grasp on uh, what needs to happen there. Uh, the only outstanding question was um, if the default uh, should be none um, or external. External would be closer to the current behavior, but none would be kind of a little more aligned with how CRDs work upstream. It looks like Andy uh, has some thoughts. I, I think it's fine to default to either one. None makes sense because it's less effort <laughs> if you, uh, you know, don't want to think about it. And if folks decide that they don't like none as a default, we'll change it later. Sounds great. Is that one uh, that you want to work on, Dan? Yeah, I assigned myself to it. OK, cool. Thanks. All right. Next one. Um, doc website offers just one release, and it's not a release. I think this refers also to what we have discussed today, right, um, Mike? Yeah, just just put it in uh, in progress. Right. I did get Avanal's uh, PR merged, but I need to see how the GitHub action is going. So. Gotcha. Another one: document how to view guarded metrics from E two E tests. Backlog. Can try to see. Can I get assigned it to you, uh, to me? Because I've been working on similar things in the past yep. and monitoring bits. So maybe uh, we can find a solution to get the prom dump, the Prometheus dump into the E2E artifacts. We have some tooling in, in OpenShift for that one. Um. Fuck. Deployments couldn't go couldn't go back to the original replicas count in KCP by sync or reconciler after manual change. The deployment in P cluster. I don't know if the ah, David, raise your hand. Yeah, yeah. So this one I discussed with Rama from uh, uh, you know, during 
from QE. Um, and this was obviously based on the wrong assumption that since KCP should be the single source of truth, a ways for uh, things uh, synced to, to physical clusters, uh, there was the assumption that, you know, if someone modifies, for example, the replica of a deployment on the downstream side, then automatically it should be overwritten by, by the version of the deployment on the KCP side. And the truth is that that's not the case completely. I mean, as soon as you have something that changes upstream, it will be overwritten, obviously, uh, and that's all uh, works today. But the only thing that is, you know, that triggers um, an update of the downstream object based on the upstream object is when you delete the downstream, the synced object uh, downstream. And, and we do not expect, you know, to trigger automatically overwriting of downstream objects when they are modified downstream. Uh, that would, you know, be on one side, you know, in, involved many uh, events, uh, watching many events, and on the other side, um, we should think about this more precisely because there might be some cases where it makes sense that the downstream cluster modified some spec fields of synced resources. Uh, yeah. Andy, you, you wanted to mention something? Oh, okay, sorry. Mr. Rui, you raised your hand. Um, yes. Oh, um, yeah. see you. Sorry. Yeah, um, I remember uh, um, this was the, um, it was not kind of an assumption, but I remember way back, uh, this was how it was working. Um, I think uh, uh, after speaking to David, I understand that that's not the case. We will try to, I will try to go back and check the chat with Andy, because I remember we have discussed this with Andy last time um, and see what needs to be done here. For now, I think let's keep it open and maybe I will update the bug with my comments tomorrow. Maybe, uh, I'm, I'm not saying that it's not something that we should, you know, enhance in the future, maybe ensuring more consistency and, and avoiding more over, you know, manual changes on the downstream is, is a good thing, but I would mostly see that as a feature or, and not as a bug because uh, obviously, it has to be, you know, included in a wider uh, thinking and design about what are the fields on which we allow changes and the fields on which we don't allow changes. So that's that, there's no obvious answer here. So maybe creating a, a, an, a, an enhancement, a feature issue, might be might be at least a, a good place to track the discussion. Yeah, sure. Uh, David, is, uh, who too, sure. can I assign this one to, to you, David, or? Uh, yeah, well, yes, well, to me, oh, Castori, I think that we have to at least answer this, this, this issue to explain why we close it. And then we would be able to open, you know, a feature issue about, do we want to enhance the, the maintenance, the, the, you know, consistency, maintenance in the future. All right, I would, I would assign it then to the both of you if you were fine with that. Well, we just discussed the issue, you know, okay. two hours ago, I think. <laughs> so, All right. which explains okay. why, why the, 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 the issue has not been updated. Cool, okay. Um, release workflow should play nice with GitHub packages. The KCP and Synker should use the same release version in the release page. We can find the correct version of KCP and Kubernetes KCP plugin for each release. Yeah, Andy? Yeah, I think we we need to consolidate our images because we build images that go into GitHub's repo, and then we also build with Prowl. I know that Steve and Steve and I were chatting about it the other day. We didn't resolve who was going to take it, but I would love to see uh, one way to build images, which generally would probably be Prowl. Um, 
and we we have another issue about the discrepancy between how we build the KCP image versus the Sinker image, because one uses Builda, one uses Co. Uh, so I, I think in general, the summary here is we need somebody to take point on getting rid of all of the other ways that we produce images and just consolidating to Prowl most likely. Mm. Stephen, go ahead. Yeah, um, that, that sounds fine, Andy. Um, obviously, we were discussing that on the Helm charts PR that I mentioned earlier on, um, and so it'd be good to kind of reach consensus. I'm happy to help um, drive that forward. I was not entirely sure on you know which approach we would prefer. Um, one issue we do need to resolve is that I think that currently the Prow images um, are not using the um, Docker file from the KCP repo, so we'll need to fix that first. I think before removing any of the other upstream images. So. Um, yeah, I'll take a look at what's involved to, to try and make progress on that. Cool. Thanks. Oh, that's my bad. I should have put that in next. I'm filing flakes when I see them, so. Hey, is this one quite new? I didn't see it until now. Uh, it happened today. Okay. And I, I guess I'll um, repeat my call, which I think I had last week, which was if you all have time, we have a lot of flakes, uh, a lot of new flakes that have recently cropped up uh, now that we have multiple shards and scheduling to multiple shards that's mm -hmm. merged. So uh, it's to be expected. And we need as much help as we can get in uh, reviewing flakes, filing flakes. So if, if you have a pull request and one of your tests fails and it looks like it's unrelated to anything that you changed in your pull request, uh, my ask would be that first you just go to the issues link in KCP, search for the test that failed. If you find one that is either, if it's open, just include a link to it. If it's closed, uh, see if it's the same and reopen it if it is. And if not, please file a new flake. Mm -hmm. uh, I, we may have this documented. If not, I will document it and um, and put that up there. But uh, so the two things are, if you have a PR and it's flaking, we need to know what the flakes are and make sure that it's either filed or linked. And if you have some spare time, we'd love help in trying to deflake what is flaky right now. All right. Okay. Um, anything else? I think for the milestone epics, is there anything we should mention from here? Basic API priority and fairness for KCP. Uh, need to check in on that with Jamie right. uh, later. And there's, I think we probably need to have a separate uh, time to go through the issues that are currently in the 0 0.11 milestone. I don't. I mean, I'm happy to do that async, or anybody uh, can do it as well. So, uh, yeah, you'll probably need to talk to me more than Jamie. He's been reassigned. Okay. Um, but yeah, we need to. You know, we, basically, we were in the status. The status is we were. Jamie basically implemented what I outlined with Stefan at the beginning, uh, but then Andy said, "Well, we don't actually want that." So uh, we're in the process of redefining what we want. So we need to bring that to some conclusion. Yeah. All right. OK, thanks a lot. I would say that concludes also today's community call. Perfect in time. Thanks, everybody, for joining. And uh, enjoy the rest of your week. Bye-bye. Thank you.